Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back with another stream of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, July 13th, and we are on the America's account. We're going to have to defeat three boss dungeon bosses and play t 12 minions that cost five or more. Not particularly hard challenges. Uh, we have a ton of news, and unfortunately, as much as I would want to get away from, I believe her name is Jessica Price, and, uh, yes, and that thing, I've painted myself into a corner right now because, let me double check, am I doing dungeon runs? Yes, du dungeon runs, uh, which is a single player expansion from Cobalt's and Catacombs. Dungeon runs, yes. Apparently, I won. When did I do that? Well, whenever I did that, that really doesn't help anything. Many monsters you are finding in Cobalt Empire. Who is daring to come for Cobalt treasure? Let's see, I've Sword done them all. Sparkle Flinger! Um, who would be the easiest? Probably the hunter. So, Gamma Sutra has this article, Opinion, it's past time to get serious about social media policies. Uh, of course. Uh, I agree with that. I think the social media policy is simple. People are responsible for what they say always, and they're going to be held accountable by everybody who hears it. So if you say something offensive like Jessica Price, you can totally be unilaterally fired as it's put here in this game. Uh, and Peter Fry's also. Uh, disclosure, I consider Price a friend. No duh, so does every other mainstream video game journalist. They frankly have gotten pathetic about defending her and trying to shift the narrative of what is clearly evidence you can see what she posted. There's screenshots out there. Don't believe me, go see what she said. Compared to the one comment that had three parts and I literally could only find the first part of that comment and that she never even talked to the streamer about. She didn't even respond to him as I understand it. She screenshotted his comment and then went on a rant. Uh, to my side. So, but my opinion is the policy should be simple. It's like, you get off Twitter. Uh, I was hearing on the Beast class as they were bending over backwards to, to excuse Price and say she shouldn't have been fired. Uh, which, at a certain point, this is also making a horrible... Uh, for being in your dungeon. A horrible feminist statement. Uh, this, there is an aggressive form of sexism where it's I hate women, but there is also a subtle passive form of feminism, I mean sexism, where it's I need to protect women. And inherently they're, they're being sexist themselves by protecting uh, price from the consequences of her own actions that, One that run is to be she deserves to, to be in. Uh, but as far as social media policies, yeah, get off Twitter. It's a public forum. It's not, you can say it's your public, private Versus. Twitter all you want, but it still reflects on you and you, as long as you work for a company, Let's reflect on your company. Uh, everybody, whether you work at McDonald's, whether you uh, work at arena net whether you work at the white house get off twitter uh, if you want to uh, get off twitter if you're going to make controversial statements i would say uh, and i'd say mostly stay with just a fully private spend the research time to google how to make my Facebook account private. Um, I think you can turn off comments and just post images to Instagram as long as you're posting non controversial images to Instagram if you don't want to do uh, the more conversational Facebook. 
get off Tumblr. Tumblr is, <laughs> is again, uh, I don't think private. Or maybe you could set it private, but you probably not. It's probably not good to be on Twitter, uh, Tumblr, anyways. Uh, maybe just get off all social media, and particularly the mainstream video game media should get off all social media because it is to them that is a big part of their echo chamber. To the point where little people have made block lists where if you happen to follow somebody they don't agree with they will block you and you'll find that some people have instant blocked you and you've never even followed them and you've never even seen them uh, just because you followed somebody that they don't agree with um, particularly on Twitter so yeah that's crazy mm. Let's see. Uh, this this interesting says says that Hideke, Hideke Kamiya uses his Twitter to routinely insult fans who make polite suggestions. I, I want to see that. Uh, Hmm. So, so this article is making an interesting argument is that other people have gotten away with bad behavior at different companies, therefore ArenaNet can't have higher standards. speak to me. Like this is a, one of the longest one of the longest articles it's from Catherine Cross who is uh, the person who I've seen her make some interesting points on a few occasions uh, on Gamma Sutra I imagine that there's a dozen other medium posts and I don't look at uh, like Like, the, the thing here is, I, I feel like I'm in a weird position in particular. I, I feel like I'm, I'm taking crazy pills at, at this point because it seems so obvious that, that rude, unprofessional people should be fired. As a big proponent in the management style of firing people early and not letting them fester and get worse, which I think Jessica Price probably has been festering and getting worse, uh, and probably has been a toxic employee, uh, to use that phrase that I hate to use, uh, from the word go. Uh, But I hear every single people in the media defending her. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Hideaki Kojima, see this tweet? Is this a verified Twitter? It doesn't look like it's verified to me following one people one person uh, somebody asked him uh, are you watching kill la kill question mark and the response is uh, wait I don't, I don't understand I don't understand this tweet it, it seems like what I'm I'm gonna excuse the Japanese guy for not speaking proper English and mistranslating things. Uh, it is worth noting that in the Japanese language there's only one insult well and then you can say everything else it's how you say it in the actual enunciation of it so enunciation is very important in the Japanese language so that being said this translates to capital capital words fuck off Twitter 
and then the status to the uh, the status I think and I assume this is a retreat at Otter uh, Platinum should make a kill a kill game like so uh, Otter is O T T T T E R on Twitter Platinum should make a kill a kill game like So yeah, I don't even know what this is a this is even means, but uh, when this happened in December 2013, there's one comment that loves it, another comment that loves it, another comment, another comment, and another comment. I literally see like five comments that that are in on some kind of inside joke, and they get it, and they love it. Uh, maybe somebody was saying, uh, would you work with Trigger to make a kill or kill game? Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of this comment, frankly. It, it seems like it's an inside joke. It seems like everybody is in on it. Uh, so, this is probably an extreme stretch against the Just Price rant. If there was... If there was any Japanese person that was going on extreme rants uh, Be winning more fights? Be and more being loot. offensive Come intentionally, on, that they're going to have to be so high up in their company that they're irreplaceable. Because, I mean, that's all of Japan's culture in a nutshell, is you are always polite to everybody except for your family behind closed doors. You can be rude to them. Uh, and you can certainly passive aggressively harass people ben beneath you, directly beneath you. Uh, but to publicly say this, I think this is just a um, a translation error more than anything. I think if you if you heard it and was a full time, uh, let's see, here's one from July 9th. Uh, that's his pin tweet. Really fed up with insects which never read my posts and just keep posting. That's why I'm telling you not to post me in languages other than Japanese. If you break this rule, that means you're a brainless insect and will be blocked immediately. Be careful. Ah! Well, gee, if anybody reads this pin tweet, I guess you're, you get exactly what he's said. Like, 12 minutes ago. Really? Repeat, really fed up with insects who never read my posts and just keep posting. That's why I'm telling you not to post me in post my la in languages other than Japanese. Aha! And see, that's crazy because they have translated this tweet, but uh, but they seem to be. Um, Maybe they don't translate into Japanese well enough for him to understand. Hmm. So, overall, just a horrible stretch and a bad uh, inability to or denial of wanting to understand what's going on with this person's tweet and using it to justify Jessica Price's thing. Like, Jessica Price speaks English. She speaks English perfectly well enough to go on that very long way. Uh, let's see. See, this guy's not even verified, so I don't even know if this really is his tweet at Twitter. Uh, it says he's the Platinum Games game developer for Biohazard 2, Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Akami, Bayonetta, The Wonderful 101. Yeah. Terrible, terrible example. Hmm. Like, terrible.
terrible example to justify bending over backwards. And see, I didn't want to go into a rant about the Jurassic Prize situation. It just keeps going on and on, and mainstream video game media keeps bringing it up when, frankly, they should have just dropped it. It would have been better for Jurassic Prize, in fact, if if they said, "Look, we're gonna do you a favor, and we're just gonna stop talking about this as a whole. We're gonna collude like we did in Game of Day, and we're just going to." Uh, talk about something different we'll probably collude and shift the narr narrative uh, again uh, the fact that they're bringing it up isn't doing her any favors she she hasn't posted or said anything since being fired that that makes the game make it makes it look like it's a bit be better on her or puts her in a better light Moving on, we've got a game on Steam called Chronicles of Mystery. This is from City Interactive SA, which is which flooded Steam all on the same day with nine games. They're all old games, like Chronicles of Mystery Secrets of the Lost Kingdom is came out April 21st in 2011. It's a widescreen hidden object game. I believe the price here will be yes, 20% off for $3.99. That's a little too expensive. It seems like if City Interactive SA has any more games to, to put on Steam, uh, and assuming Steam isn't slowing them down and saying, look, you just can't have this many come out at the exact same time, uh, we will probably hear more from them within the next few days. And so I'll probably talk about them more I hunt alone. Monday we've got a game on Steam called The Vagrant came out July 13th it's very positive at 90% overall uh, it's a female protagonist action RPG adventure to platformer it looks polished a little bit I would say that because the camera zoomed down a little bit and the characters, I would, I would say, are arguably a few pixels shorter than they should be, the, the characters look a little bit off, but not horribly off. Everything else looks good. It seems like this is a fast-paced platformer hack and slash game. It, you've got your kind of standard uh, barbarian woman with with far too revealing armor and far too large cleavage as the main character. Extremely long disheveled hair and thick hair, blonde hair as a character. A really long sword. Uh, let's see. It from the trailer animation of her she looks more kind of like a Samus Aran, Aran character, but from the actual gameplay of her, I guess I'll re-roll this while we're doing this. We'll play Monster Hunter class cards. And we got a card pack. I don't really see a reason to not open these packs before the new expansion happens now. Anyway, so... Let's do that. Uh, the, there's really no way I can't be in line with the community on this game. Like, it looks good. It looks like it's worth playing. Maybe there's going to be an hour issue here. Uh, it feels like it's a lot like Dust of an Elysian Tale, except for you've got a big busted uh, woman instead. And, I think I've made my my appeal towards big busted women frequently enough to say that I enjoy them, not that I don't enjoy small breasted women. Uh, also, I'll take anybody and everybody, pretty much. Let's see, do I want to play Secrets or Battle Cry? Um, let's play Secrets. 
So yeah, this has to be a wishlisted game. Cool. Let's see. Rexa versus hmm. Anduin. And apparently, the light shall bring victory. This is a. Let the hunt begin. There's some kind of releasing promotion. There's something here, if you play the game, they're giving away. Interesting. This is, this is a scam. Like, I'm still gonna wishlist this game, it, it still looks good, but I, this, they're, they're pulling a scam that I think Steam has specifically said you can't do. Uh, the rules to entry on this promotion are uh, set your oh, profile God. and game details public on Steam profile and do not click the box always keep my total playtime private even if users can see my game details because clearly they can't even see if you played uh, you have until July 24th and gifts will be sent out uh, via this company JD Express or Amazon uh, hmm. uh, apparently if you've done this with this company oh, before and asked for a refund you won't you're you're not allowed to ever win a, a contest ever again Mind if I roll let's see me. each team account has one chance to participate like So, your playtime to be entered has to be uh, more than two hours, so you can't refund the game. And, let's see. Each of those lucky gamers mentioned above will receive a Switch. Yeah, so they're... They're, they're telling you they're giving away switches if you play this game. This is not This is totally not Something that you can do. This is exactly what Steam has said straight up. You cannot do this uh, Interestingly you can't rate down quickly uh, Rate down a comment mm. So the only thing I could really do on this game is flag it. Uh, let's see, the first review I see for this game... What game is this, by the way? Let's just scroll back, I've forgotten the name. Uh, the Vagrant, yes. Let's see. Uh, it says this game is the definition of a rough diamond. The potential is there. The art is great. The concept is nice, and the story could be rewritten into something interesting. However, at the in end of the day, it falls short on so many things. The only reason I could actually recommend this is the low price. The controls are responsive, and you never feel like the character won't do what you want her to do. But the movement is clunky. Jumping is zero mobility, and dodging is only reliable way of repositioning yourself. I hear a, I see a recommended game that says it reminds me of Dust of a Legion Tale. That's exactly what I felt like too. I think maybe Steam is learning that people want to see the negative reviews before they see the positive reviews. Hmm. Sorry, I, I bet people want to watch me actually play Hearthstone too. Um, let's see. Let's see, how, how do you report a game? Flag, here we go. Flag this. So I'm gonna go with fraud. Hmm. 
like fraud's the right term, but as it as it's written here, the software fraudulently attempts to gather sensitive information. Uh, let's see, and the the only other thing I could click would be legal violation, and it says if you're copyright and uh, owner, then go over here to this site. Let's see. So it's a shame that a good looking game is gonna have to get reported just for shenanigans, but we really can't have fraudulent things here. So I'm just gonna type running a a giveaway away for people buy and play for more than two hours to the switch giveaway Let's see there I won. post on let's see echo <laughs> these characters post on store page all right report and did that report really go through or did it just ignore me because I'm not signed in? Uh, interesting. I'm going to wishlist a game that I'm going to then turn around and uh, I just flagged. <laughs> and I don't want to be the voice of censorship, certainly, but this is something they specifically said can't happen. Is that they will not allow people to buy to sell their games or promote their games via giveaways. Uh, that, that's just one of the things they don't want. <laughs> and if you're not going to follow those rules, then who knows, maybe the software is going to end up having a virus in it or something else is going to happen. Uh, moving on, next game we have on Steam is Art of Murder. Now the Art of Murder series is the city interactive in object games that you know i think if they made a bundle i'd go for them they, they look good enough they're too expensive right now 20 percent off for three dollars and 99 cents but yeah i i they they look like they have a cutscene at the very least that has some modern graphics it looks like the screens may be framed around in black, but maybe not. And, like the last cutscene seems to be in full, full resolution. It is just a hidden object game, but it is a hidden object game that does, is also not a extremely cheap effort uh, in the instance of um, a lot of the other hidden object developers have games where it's like it's always going to have a Frankenstein, it's always going to have a, uh, a Dracula, it, it's always going to have a, a, a hotel, and they're just randomly mixing in items and characters. Uh, whereas Art of Mortar seems like it's, it's a more consistent, more realistic story. So I'm going to put the entire series on my wish list, and this might be the way to go in the future for me. Uh, so the 
question is, do I really need every single Art of Murder game open? No. Uh, the Chronicles of Mysteries Tree of Life was the other hidden object game from City Interactive SA. I think I, I'm willing to try all of their games. Or at you least try consider. one of them. I, I probably need to do some research and go... If I did City Chronicles of Mystery, there, there's less of those. Certainly. They're all the same price. They really just flooded the the Steam store. What? Why do this? These are all old games. They're from like 2010. What? Why not do yourself a little bit of a favor and release one game a week and see if you can catch people's attention at different points? This is an interesting point. So this one gives him charge, this one gives him beast, uh, uh, rush. So you can't attack twice because of that. Uh, so charge overlaps rush, regardless of the order you play. It feels like the Chronicles of Mystery and the Art of Murder series all center around a female protagonist. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same female protagonist or not, uh, but certainly something interesting there. Your Gamer has an article, Visceral has had some cool ideas for Dead Space 4, out of this world. This is one of those uh, articles that links to a video that's about 8 minutes long. And I'm sure it's just the developers talking about what they wanted to do. Uh, doesn't really matter inherently what we would want to see and we'd want to have happen is that Visceral's employees, who now don't work for Visceral anymore because that's gone, uh, went on and made their own like spiritual successor games. This is interesting because now I have Rush because of this on all these. So I can do some pretty major damage. Fresh in one turn. Uh, but this is also kind of just a Sour Grapes article. Like, if you don't have a game. To, to release if you're not going to put it in comic book or novel form, if you're not going to put out a post that says this is what would happen at the end of the story, kind of like that post for Half-Life 3 uh, that the writer, I think, leaked. Uh, I don't know if they, they ever verified that it was, that was an official leak or if that was just some fan story uh, when that came out. Like, if you've got nothing to offer other than, oh, I swear my game was going to be really great, too bad you, you're never going to get to see it. Uh, how are you really benefiting society or, you know, even benefiting yourself from that? Let's see, we've got a game called The Castle of Disaster 2. I see it's a tower defense game, so immediately I'm turned off. Let's see, oh, not only is it a tower defense game... It looks like it must paint level graphics. With five Steam achievements, 40% off for 59 cents. Part of the Go Go Bundle number 52 that has 18 items for a dollar and 49 cents. Just extremely low quality, extremely low price games. I don't get it. Here we have the Art of Murder FBI con. Uh, FBI Confidential, and again you're playing as a female character, I think it's different female characters each story, which is fine by me. Although frankly they did put, uh, no I think it's two, I think the Art of Murder series has FBI agent Nicole Bonnet uh, as the investigator, and then the other series that isn't the Art of Murder series has a reporter. Uh, 
Yeah. I keep I keep looking because I, I opened like all nine of the Art of Murder tabs. And see, mm -hmm. even at this point, I want to take it. I've been streaming for over two hours now. I still don't see the end of my tabs on the far right of my screen, uh, of my Chrome browser. That's, that's a problem, certainly. I've taken too long, and so I need to rush things. Now, we have a game called Mini Car Racing on Steam. Eh, it, it just kind of looks like a nicely polished, uh, low polygon racing game that could have been a mobile game if it came out just today. Uh, it's 40% off for dollar and 79 cents. It doesn't seem like it's gonna offer anything. And I need to limit myself to the best of the best of the racing games. Uh, we have a game called Snake Couple on Steam, and this is a new developer uh, publisher, or it's a troll developer. Uh, or publisher who is on Steam and they are making a whole collection of games that they're putting out that they put out on July 3rd uh, mm. uh, July 13th so they have a game called Dog Couple these couple games by the way are just find the matches it's just a match match two game and it looks so awful they're all 10% off for 89 cents. So it's dog couple, cat couple, meme couple, vegetable couple, berry couple, bird couple, animal couple, fruit couple, butterfly couple, snake couple. Like 10 games. Well, let's actually count all the ones on January 13th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, it seems like you can post as many as 10 games on the same day and Valve won't stop you or look at it. Maybe 10 is the cutoff. That could be be the issue, certainly. Uh, but maybe not. Let's go ahead and kill this. PC Gamer has an article, Old School RuneScape pulled offline as well billions of gold appear out, out of nowhere so uh, and then the update is old school runescape is back online following a 20 minute server rollback in other words all the gold generated by the bug has vanished as quickly as it appeared additionally mischievous players who purchased in-game bonds using nail gotten gold and redeemed them for membership have had their bonus membership revoked and will also see action Taken against their accounts and will temporarily be removed from the game. Everyone else should be in the clear. See, and I just need to play about seven more hunter cards. So I'm done for the day as far as Hearthstone. Nowhere close to being done as far as news. I don't know why so much news came out over the past couple days. Um. Rexa! We have a game called Coach Bus Simulator Parking. There's way too many bus simulator games out there. This one's 10% off for $4.49. It doesn't look special at all. It, it looks fine if you're one of the incredibly small niche of people. I, I don't want to generalize, but I'd, I'd have to think you're, you're either pretty, pretty obsessive of a person to want to wanna play a bus simulator game and if I was gonna play a bus simulator game it would be something like crazy taxi <laughs> where you could drive crazy, crazy or at least traveler. something that would encourage or allow that I also wanted to mention chocolate makes you happy 7 is out from blender games the developer who's made six other chocolate games and all of them are extremely low effort uh, mobile looking physics puzzle games so he's put out another one to be fair blender games seems to take their time a little bit when they flood steam they're also the makers of the amaze series uh, which is like five amaze games like they're, they're not as bad as as some people but they they're not great, really, either. Quickly. 
play that and in the turn I guess uh, we have a game called Fancy Skiing 2 Online it looks like it's a VR game it says it's single player and online multiplayer yes it requires VR and it's $11.99 I feel like playing skiing in VR is asking to to fall over and break your VR headset because despite how much you could mentally try to keep in your head not to lean forward not to lean back uh, anybody with any kind of instinct that knows how to ski I feel like is going to accidentally do exactly that and when they lean over in their headsets they're gonna fall over and they're gonna break their headsets um, that being said fancy skiing online looks fine as far as the game it's let's see what languages it is English and simplified Chinese so maybe they're tricking me there graphics don't look amazingly great but yeah just don't think that's a good move you if, if you do want to do that you probably need to uh, start with the idea of introducing some kind of practice surfboard or practice ski platform something where you could actually bend your knees and it would react to the surface of the game and you wouldn't fall over because of that but I, you're still gonna fall over people who ski fall over and it's, it's just too dangerous in the first place um, not skiing in the real world but skiing when you're effectively blinded or being shown something different through vr even the smallest bit of latency moving on there's a game on steam called kill the monsters it's a top-down twin stick shooter looks like a low effort game something a second or maybe even third year video game programmer might program but not something that should be on steam in my opinion it's a dollar and 99 cents there's nothing here that interests me mm -hmm. uh, first game from this developer which i need to stop looking at that that only makes things take even longer <laughs> Uh, Gamatsu has an article, the Psycho Collection Volume 1 has been announced for Switch, that's P-S-I-K-Y-O, uh, let's see, it includes the currently available Nintendo eShop ti titles, Strikers 1945, Soul Divide, S-O-L Divide, Sword of Darkness, uh, Samurai Aces for the Nintendo Switch, Gunbird, and it's only been currently confirmed for the Korea area. Let's see. I'm not sure what these games really are, if they're bullet hell shooters or what. They seem to be Arc System Works published. These could be anything. And the only thumbnail that they're even using is just a logo that says Psycho Collection Volume 1. So that's not helpful information. Probably wasn't going to be helpful information anyways, but they, they've gotten really unhelpful on it. Okay. What do we want to do? Kill a two and kill a two. That's probably the best move. Let's see. Super Destroy Not DX is out. This is one of those games Your that was hyped days. before the release, so I know about this. Uh, it's inspired by an arcade classic. Uh, that arcade classic being uh, not Arkanoid, uh, not Asteroid, Galaga. It's inspired by Galaga, but it seems like it's 
trying to do a you know pac-man championship edition dx style uh, expansion on that idea and concept which i certainly did like pac-man championship edition dx i think too so I, I can't disagree with that idea and so i'm gonna at least wishlist this and keep an eye on it see how reviews go if anybody actually reviews it um, I saw a Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 player that very much changed the gameplay in a very weird way because the two Pac-Men on screen had to work together to create long chains of ghosts and then one person when they ate the power pellet had to hit the front of the ghost chain and the other had to hit the back of the ghost chain so that they meet in the middle and kiss basically and uh, I guess at this point we should just play a little ranked with the Murloc deck that's all we got oh, well spiritual priest is supposed to be the one that does the best deck according to HA3 play let's try that if we're trying to get victories um so yeah Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 player, the X 2 player, whatever the name is, is uh, an odd experience My to require two players. Fire. Uh, the light shall bring not victory. something I'd probably ever play, but an interesting thing, certainly, if you've got somebody you play video games with all the time and they're both you and they are very good at Pac-Man. Which that, that kind of limits the audience, doesn't it? Moving on, PC Gamer has an article, Screw Lovecraft, let's talk about other horror universe games could explore. Uh, enough HP already, our tentacles have gone limp. This is a great thing to be said, certainly. The, the other thing I would say is uh, Screw Twin Peaks, uh, but they're almost certainly going to mention Twin Peaks in this article but Lovecraft and Twin Peaks in particular are, are way too no, uh, overused uh, when you could certainly go with several other types of new fan new horror stories or old horror stories uh, so the first thing they say is anything from uh, Junji Ito, Ito, that's J-U-N-J-I-I-T-O, he's a manga artist who does a lot of really crazy -y things that, that I would suspect he's, he's getting medicinal help to think up some of these ideas, uh, whether that's magic mushrooms or LSD or what, and that's just my speculation. Uh, very, very horrific, very bizarre stuff from Jinji Ito. Probably the most you're gonna find in the, in even the slightly non-mainstream. You're gonna have to go deep down the well into the underground to find more. Uh, next one is Ken Newman's Anno Dracula. Never heard of this. Uh, it depicts an alternate history where Dracula was real, married Queen Victoria and became Prince Regent. Nushered in a world where vampires lived openly alongside human humans. Must consider. Let's see. Let's. I'm gonna try. Well, I could have played that. I wonder if I should have played that. Oh no, I probably should have. Hmm. This predated the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen series. Uh, next they say, uh, Through the Night, House of Leaves, and My Life, uh, which I believe are three horror novels the light from Mark Z. Danielowski. Well, maybe not from House of Leave is Mark Z. Danielski through the night is Stig Stutterbachen. Um, the next 
paragraph is Jeff Vandermeer's Southern Research Trilogy. Like, I haven't heard of any of these except for Junji Ito. And so, if they're hitting some horror things I haven't seen or heard of, that is great news because we could certainly use uh, more horror games in different types of environments telling different stories even just like taking the universal monsters and instead of making them funny and and silly looking like hotel transylvania might do just take them and take them in a different direction you can totally do a dracula series you can totally do a frankenstein series you can totally do a mummy series and and just base it off the simplest thing it's a mummy it's a it's a frankenstein monster it's it's a vampire uh, and that's all you really need to take to go in a different direction you can even write stories to just specifically go in different directions uh, a little surprising that there isn't a horror game based on something like godzilla uh, you could probably make a game where Godzilla is attacking the city you happen to be in and you have to uh, find a way to to escape in, in a pure escapist game where the, the goal is not even to, to, to defeat the monster it's just to, to escape with your life uh, the next one they have is Garth Marenghi's Dark Places. Is Dark Places uh, a real TV show or was it a comedy like Adult Swim thing? Apparently it was a real thing. And then obviously Stephen King, King is a later in the World of the Worlds. It was a World of the Worlds game that, that I wanted to play. I think I own that. I think of it and I didn't get get around to ever playing it. I'll have to like actually that's that's the one thing I wanna do is I wanna come back and see if I can play that War of the Worlds game. So I'm gonna leave that article open, which normally I don't do uh, after talking about something. <laughs> Let's see. Let's look at this developer first. This is a developer before anything else I want to point out has a ton of negative and neutral rated games. Very low effort games trying to sell sell on anime six six girls. So they're selling a game called Ichi Cards, E C C H I. Okay. Ichi is, if I understand the word correctly, it's lewd, uh, sexually lewd, maybe slightly above, uh, above what you would just say is lewd, but not so above it that it falls into the straight up porn category, which they would call hinta, which is uh, hentai, which is pervert correctly uh, the, the thing about this card game is that the graphics look awful and the board looks awful and you're so small that even even though every single image is just an image of a, of an anime girl you you're not even seeing anything um, if you want this you're better off playing hearthstone than getting the hearthstone a nude mod then giving money to people like this who are basically running just a scam or at least making very low quality products each of cards is 40% off for $2.99 and like I'll quickly jump through every single screenshot but they all look exactly the same because it's just a board I imagine there's no other uh, menus or anything really hmm. like it's, it's really just reinventing the wheel the other game 
which I almost would recommend this one because it, it offers something different here from this developer low effort there's a game called my bingo and it's just bingo you can play one through four cards and there's at least one anime girl uh, slightly askew in a slightly askew clothing uh, in the background but you're not seeing anything because the bingo cards in the way so I assume what happens is if you win a bingo you'll get to see something in um, now the reason why I think this is almost worth it as a game it's selling for 40 percent off for 59 cents is if for some reason you love to play bingo and you can't get it on your cell phone uh, or you just want to play it on your PC and that's really all you want to do this looks like it's a fine bingo it's kind of hard to screw up bingo there's there may not be as many options as far as what types of bingo you're playing since this is just a five in a row bingo it seems like um, but beyond that it seems it's kind of fine as a bingo game. So if you take a fine, simple bingo game and you add anime girls to it and people are into that, it's almost worth it at its low, low price. Almost. You, you still have to, to get over the hump that you're supporting somebody who's, who's just known to make extremely poor quality games. And if they let you flood Steam with 10 games per per day, as it seems they do, the light dim. seems like there probably is no flag that gets turned turned on if you have 20 or 30 negatively or mixed reviewed games on under your developer name. Uh, next game we have on Steam is called Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E. Lynn -N -E. Lin is a short story about the scariest thing in the world, being a teenager. It's a free-to-play indie simulation visual novel. Um, the animation doesn't look great, and it's real-world pictures in the background, so... Let's Your go ahead and hit this. Incredible. So yeah, this is a cheap visual novel game. Not really worth talking. It's free though, so I guess if you want to play, uh, it's English and Russian. Uh, so take that for what it also it means, or for whatever you want to take from that. We have Yami uh, Munoz, uh, or Jamie Unit Munoz. He says, hello, hello, uh, friend in Spanish, is what he says he's saying, at least. He wrote it in Spanish, and then translated, which I suppose is the kindest way to violate the English-only uh, rule. So I'll, I'll allow it in this instance. Uh, next game we have on Steam is the hugely imaginative game just called uh, Adventure Game, which is a VR game. Uh, it's fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents, and it seems like it's a collection of different things. Uh, I'm seeing shooting bows and arrows, climbing down a ladder, going into a cave and fighting skeletons. Uh, it does kind of feel like a VR effort to be a like Breath of the Wild game with no ability behind it to, to actually be a Breath of the Wild game. I'm seeing them smash pots, I'm seeing them fight knights and goblins throwing fireballs. Overall, it actually looks pretty good. I, the, the real question would be how long is this game? 
uh, inherently uh, you run into this problem with VR where people don't want to stand or wear VR for more than 30 minutes so if you're making a adventure game that has to be in VR it kind of has to be played in 30 minute chunks and I don't know adventure game ha if I own VR might convince me to play it but boy does it need a better name than adventure game Call it the adventure of any name. The adventure of Bob, the adventure of Steve. Doesn't even have to be. A, a, at least you have a character, or an IP character, that you can have have something to talk about. There. Uh, moving on, Gematsu has an article Disaster Report 4 Plus Summer Memories X Zenrin collaboration has been announced. Uh, so. Disaster Report Plus Summer Memories will use 3D city model data from the Japanese map publisher Zenrin for the graphics production of the districts that appear in the game, publisher Granzella announced. Uh, the Disaster Report series is a game that I really wish they could make one for the West because they've said that they just don't feel comfortable having foreigners play a game where it's a about Japanese people who are surviving a big disaster uh, like an earthquake or a flood and that's really the game and it's it's a story based thing and I can kind of see where they're coming from but I feel like they could make some money by setting one in the United States anywhere so setting it in the west somewhere uh, having a flood uh, New Orleans after Katrina, uh, you could write a story like that. Um, uh, and have a, a similar game. Uh, you probably just create a fictional western city in a fictional western country. So you don't insult anybody or make it seem like you're wishing harm on somebody or threatening people. Uh, but yeah, the Disaster Report series is a little too good to, to only be Japanese only. Most Japanese only games are so bad in quality, you will they, pay for that, they, it doesn't matter, but, but Disaster Report isn't one of those low quality games. Moving on, PC Gamer has another cool Fortnite is making so much money that Epic is giving the Unreal Marketplace creators a big raise. Epic is increasing the amount that content creators earn in the marketplace and making the boost retroactive, I believe, for four years. Um, so the Unreal Engine marketplace, the creators keep 70% while Epic was taking 30%, which is way better cut than what the YouTube was doing. Um, for creators, uh, most creators, at least small time creators, uh, but now they've raised their sales to 88% and leaving Epic with just 12% cut. That's, that's a big bonus and that, that's going to help more people stay on Unreal and not switch to to unity which I, I imagine there might be some some issues with unity Let me change uh, being slightly more preferred like, the the thing that's kind of a problem right now is PUBG and gearbox and way back in the past the creators of two human all kind of could make an argument that using the, the light protects Unreal Engine is not as good of an experience and you don't get as much support as you want. Uh, Creators of Two Humans sued Epic because of that and lost, and that's why Two Human is not available, allowed to be sold anywhere, uh, making my copy of Two Human probably moderately valuable. Uh, PUBG was working with Epic right and instead of getting support to, to improve and make 
PUBG a better game. Epic came out with Fortnite Battle Royale. And see, they kind of have this all's fair and love and war attitude. So, so there is an argument that uh, that you should probably use Unity instead of Unreal, even though I think Unreal is probably the better platformer uh, platform and engine to program on for first-person shooter. Borderlands 3 has been dead silent because, it, and I think some of that might be difficulty at Gearbox just programming Borderlands 3 to the to the Unreal engine. And I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that it comes out and it's not on the Unreal Engine. Uh, Fortnite drew in an estimated 318 million in revenue in May, and so that allows them to do this raise, which it, right now I guess it's good for Unreal people. Uh, in the end, it doesn't matter how much you're getting as far as a cut selling assets on the Unreal Store if it turns out that people are start avoiding working with Epic, the company that mm. owns Unreal in total because of their, Awaken my their cut throughout actions. Okay. So the best thing I can do is this and this. Right away. This. And that. This. Uh, PC Gamer had an art article Fortnite servers reinstated after temporary downtime updated after an early snag season 5 is back uh, so Epic dis disabled servers earlier developed sought to further investigate the root cause of the problem and it seems now Should well I... uh, so the original problem because they were having a lot of server issues thought there was something else uh, with the server issues too, but I guess not. Not according to that story, it was just server issues. Interesting enough. Hmm. If Brandon uh, said, hi, what other games do you play? And then said, ooh, lucky. Uh, whatever games do I play? Best response to that is check out my YouTube channel. Uh, channel subscribe to my channel please and then when you're subscribing just click my name and go to my YouTube channel what are you subscribing that uh, that was just a show moment there's a playlist tab in the playlist tab I have a playlist called episode one start here actually it's on my main page too those have the first episode of every game I've ever covered that's a good way that I've best way I figured so far to, to see what games I've covered and start. If you don't want to do that, there's also a playlist for every game I've ever covered in the playlist tab, but it would just require you to scroll a little bit longer. Either way, uh, I guess it's it depends on do you want to go in for the long haul and watch the entire series of games, or do you want to shop around and see see what I've done. Um, the list is really really long. Uh, I have over 5,000 videos, probably over 6,000 at this point. Um, so that that's that's a little too much to talk about everybody, all of them. Uh, the other thing I could say is if you friend me on Steam, which I'm encouraging everybody to do, you can see my library from my Steam library. I have over 900 games in my possession. I certainly haven't played all 900 of those games, but uh, any of those that I haven't already covered are up for being played and covered if somebody wants to give a suggestion or some hype on that. Uh, but 
right now I just finished covering Lara Croft Go and Lara Croft Temple of the Osiris as one of the shows that airs on my time slot every day. Basically, some some shows air on the weekends. Some most shows don't. Just Monday through Friday. Um, I just wrapped up that, and so I'm in a slight break phase where I need to right schedule all the uh, footage I've recorded and uploaded. After which I'll get back to another game which I either haven't picked yet or I'll get back to playing Borderlands 2 which I started and then realized I had screwed up the order in which I should have recorded games and because of that I needed to actually uh, take a break from Borderlands 2. Let's see. Uh, Brandon C, C says, I, I see, you say you're a full-time streamer. How old are you? How long have you been streaming? Uh, I don't give out my age, but I will say I am an adult in a very unique situation where I don't, at the moment, really need to make any money. Uh, if you are an adult, even if you're like 16 year old you could you could be flipping burgers and making more money than i ever did before youtube kicked small time youtubers out of the monetization program now i don't make any money my only monetization plan is to ask people if they want to support me to friend me on steam and send me either a gift card or a game or if they get a steam code from like humble bundle store to direct mm. message that game steam code to me if they don't want it uh, so I'm mostly just playing for games I've been streaming for about four years I had was about a year before that I was coming off of a long stretch of not playing games but before that stretch of not playing games I practically did nothing with my life but play video games and so I have several decades of playing experiences going back to the NES era. I, I never had an Atari or Commodore, and I certainly didn't have every single console uh, after the NES either. Uh, I mostly was obsessed with Nintendo until I got the Xbox 360. Then I got very obsessed with playing games on the Xbox 360. And uh, after... Uh, after several years of playing with the Xbox 360, I I kind of burnt out, uh, mostly because of previous jobs just taking up all my time. Uh, so I I had a stretch where I was just not playing playing video games. And then Hearthstone certainly was one of the reasons that brought me back to playing video games because I was playing it anyways, and I I figured heck I'm playing this game at least once every three days and I might as well uh, might as well stream it to YouTube I, I got into YouTube way too late had I started instead of four years ago uh, ten years ago I imagine instead of having slightly over 250 subscribers I would have just out of being early to the party I, I imagine 10,000, 100,000 subscribers, like, but maybe not, like, I am kind of a unique guy, I have my own niche of games I like to cover, uh, I don't run towards the fads uh, so much, so maybe my channel would always be small time, but I imagine it would have been a lot bigger had I started earlier. Let's see. So, in general, my my suggestion to people if they want to be a streamer, yeah, if you're a kid and you can't do any other job, sure, do it. Do it while it's still fun, and as soon as it stops being fun, stop doing it. Uh, protect your privacy. Don't don't use a real name. Don't give out information. Uh, don't get doxxed or or swatted where somebody calls the police and try, tries to trick the police into into killing you uh, but yeah 
at the very least you'll have footage and interesting videos to show your grandkids Revenge. someday uh, even though you're probably never going to make a career path out of it Uh, Brandon C asks, have you hit legend before? I don't really get high at the ranking of Hearthstone. Uh, no I, I've gotten no like to rest. 18 and that's about as high as I get. Because, frankly, I, first thing, I suck at Hearthstone. That's just it. Second thing, I don't pay attention to it because I'm talking about video game news when I'm streaming. So I'm reading articles and informing myself and informing my audience. Uh, I haven't until recently been using any help. So I've just been building random decks and playing with them. The deck I'm playing with right now is using hsreplay.net, which is newly integrated into the deck tracker app on the right. Uh, so I wasn't really trying. I. I to get up to Legendary, you have to actually play Hearthstone, I think, as the main and only game you play on a daily basis, and I just don't like the card game enough to do that. So I come on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do the daily quest, I get the, the card packs, I have an account for the Americas, the Asians, and Europeans, every expansion going forward, that's about 150 card packs I open. Uh, for my main account, which is much older than my the uh, the Asian and the European account, I've almost got all the classics, but I'm still missing. I would say about eight legendaries, so that's probably close to 400 card packs that I'd have to open just to get a complete collection on the basic classic cards. Uh, and that's really what I'm trying to focus on because I'm trying to stay in standard play and not go in the wild play. Hmm. Let's see. Brendan C, I like it, but I have gotten to like rank 10. So you're a collector of sorts. Uh, collector of cards, that's what I'm trying to do, yeah. Uh, collector of other things, Psh, yeah. I, I, a lot of... I, used, I have a huge Nintendo collection sitting in my garage that I don't care about anymore. I have recently got into Lego and so I, I have a growing Lego collection. I have a, a pretty impressive DVD and anime collection from probably a decade ago and I don't really watch any of it any, anymore. I tried to get into comic books and got into read a bunch of DC comic book trade paperbacks and could never like any of that. I'm a pretty obsessive person, so anything I do does tend to end up as a collection. And generally it's a attempt for a complete collection. Hmm. Uh, Brandon C says, gotta go, good luck. Okay, nice talking to you. Uh, subscribe, come back another day. I'll continue with the news, which I'm still trying to burn through. I don't I don't even know. I'm gonna have to break up this after this game and make a fourth recording today. Like it's been a while since we've done a fourth recording, but it seems like it's gonna happen. So PC Gamer has an article, The Bard's Tale 4 Barrows Deep. Release de date has been set for September. Um I'm not sure, like the old Bard's Tale games are really, really old, so if the Bard's Tale 4 is not an improvement on some of the graphics there, I, I don't know how you're, you're going to be able to sell it. And I've just clicked on the Steam page and it does look like they've upgraded the graphics and, and it doesn't look like a flat... Uh, Windows 95 game, which is what I believe Bard's Tale 1 is about. Let's see. Let's go click on Bard's Tale 1 from 2005. Wait a minute. This isn't the game I was thinking about. Even Bard's Tale 1 had 3D graphics. Interesting. What am I thinking about then? Uh, 
Let's see, do I want to do that? No, I don't think so. Well, I guess I, I guess I want to keep a an eye out for. Let's see, the Bard's Tale on Steam, by the way, it says it's the. Uh, it includes the original classic games, Bard's Tale One, Two, and Three, and it's a remastered version for ten dollars. Interesting. Well, I guess I'll keep an eye out and wishlist Bard's Tale One. Seem it's a game I've heard about, so I know it had some level of importance. Tortola preserve us. Let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called Rainy Day Racing. And by the thumbnail you'd think it was like a noir-esque visual novel game, but no, it's really just a cheaply made racing game. Arguably it might be an asset flip. I haven't seen a lot of asset flips that are racing games. It's three dollars and ninety-nine cents. Uh, but certainly doesn't look like it's interesting enough to catch my attention. It's the only game from this developer. Something that certainly did catch my attention and boy am I developing a probably unhealthy nostalgia from for Pokemon. The Pokemon Let's Go uh, Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, they put out some trailers of that and man it looks good. It, I would love to have played those games instead of like Pokemon Red or Pokemon Blue or Pokemon Yellow. Uh, like it just looks better and the fact that it's the Let's Go series it's going to take a lot of the grinding out of it. Uh, Nintendo also had some Labo things that uh, that other people had developed that they showed off. But yeah, if you've got any kids right now, plan on having them play Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. Consider. I think that's pretty much a guarantee if the, if you if you have any nostalgia for. Obey. For, uh, uh, Next game we have on Steam is an early access game called Golf Galore. I'm, I'm kind of liking the fact that Steam has got now these badges, these little banners in the corner that label early access games as early access. Golf Galore looks like an asset flip of mini, mini golf putt putt. I've seen tons of games like this, and most of them don't have enough polish to be worth playing. This is another game that is exactly like that. Uh, like, I recently covered one that was, like, I think called Ventricle Golf or something like that. Ver something. Vertiginous Golf. It was some V word that I don't believe was a real word. Uh, This guy. Uh, vertiginous golf, or something. I, I kind of like that game. It, it was a little bit buggy, but it was fun and a little bit more polished. Uh, golf Galore is 20% off for $3.99. Not, not probably worth it. And in probably the winner of the week for naming of your game, there's a game called Ball Grabbers. And you play on a s different stages, and you're, you're like these two two masked sumo people who are grabbing like a glowing ball and trying to bounce it in different directions. I think to score. Let's see. It's a multiplayer only game and all these multiplayer only games are never going to be something that I um, that did I play but if the if the name intrigues you ball grabbers is 20% off for $3.99 it's polished certainly for a simplistic 
seems like two player only uh yeah it's two player only arcade game uh player versus player uh, the goal is to grab the ball and throw it against whatever blue or red object is is visible so sometimes you're on a chessboard then it's a blue chess piece sometimes you're in a fort and it's a blue door or a red door yep too many of these multiplayer games though it needs to be there needs to be some polish there let's see Okay, I just looked at the chat. We have uh, no one ragged saying, "Fight me, battle me. Can we battle, please?" What do you think about B O four? I don't even know what B O four would mean there. In that case, like I don't even know if you, no one ragged is just trolling or if he's. If he's asking to play me on Hearthstone, I haven't seen any friend request, and I'm on my America's account, so if he's on a different account, he'd have to tell me. Uh, if you're asking about Battlefield 4, or uh, I don't think much about it at all, it's not my type of game, it's not the type of games I play. Uh, moving on, PC Gamer, Fortnite season is all about movement. Fortnite season 5 is all about movement, messing around, and punishing campers. Surprising new areas and off-road vehicle and toys make Fortnite funnier and faster than, you, uh, than, than ever. I've already seen that people in Fortnite can apparently play golf, and there's a lot of people doing silly things with that. Let's see rifts seem to be like teleportation sections to, do? Uh, to move people to the different parts of the map. Let's stash that away. We already talked about that, so we don't need to talk about that. There's a game on Steam called Epic Loon. Jeez, why is it taking so long to load? Uh, it's a, it says it's an indie action physics movie platformer. I, I've never seen the movie tag before used for a video game. Uh, let's see. Epic Loon is $14.99. I thought this was more of a point-and-click horror game. Hmm. But it seems like... Didn't I see a game like this? Just a few. You are the shadows puppet. Like a few weeks ago. Awaken my children. You apparently select one of four famous games, uh, famous movies like Aliens, uh, Jurassic Park. The, the, the Dracula might be one of them. And you're these tiny characters. Quickly running around the foreground while the movie is happening or the scenes from movies are happening in the background and it seems like it's a running platformer game which is an interesting idea certainly uh, but it's i don't know how much of an experience you'd have single player um, running around and racing this um, I kind of have to, let's see, it's a, it's seems like it's selling itself more as a four player co-op game, so I don't know what actual experience you would have as a single player. Um, is it just going to be basically practice mode until you find somebody to play with you? Be gone! So, but I, I'm going to keep an eye on Epic Loon and see if it's actually a good game. Um, let's see. We've got a game called Slime CCG, which is an awfully animated 
collectible card game. Let's see. And this developer has made nothing else and they want to make a collectible card game as their first release. It's already rated at 41% in the last 30 days. It came out July 12th. Uh, you just can't make a collectible card game if you don't have a big AAA developer publisher behind you. You're just not going to have enough cards. Uh, Slime the CCG is free to play, and even at free, it's still too, it's still not good enough. Let's see. And you challenge the daughter of Death Wing? Let's see. We already talked about that story. Uh, the creators of Crypt of the Necrodancer and Industries of Titan are hiring a game programmer. They go under the name Brace Yourself Games. So, like this, unlike so many other jobs where you'd be working just for like Ubisoft Montreal, Brace Yourself Games, you're gonna probably be the number one guy. Like. The, the, this. You're gonna be the programmer, or at least one of them. Maybe you're the number three guy, uh, but they, they say they're working on three new titles while bringing our existing game to new platformers. I don't feel like Brace Yourself Game is, is that big of a company. Uh, you do need to work with them in Vancouver, Yellow Yelltown, Canada. So you do have to be in Van Vancouver if you wanna take that job. I wake once more. Another game uh, has apparently just been snuck out. It's, it's very weird how Gearbox Publishing is just not really doing enough advertising for, for being a publishing company. So, a game called Earthfall Deluxe Edition is coming out for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Um, I believe there was another game also that... Uh, that they kind of just released in between the last one uh twitter kicked off a bunch of fake accounts which made a lot of people lose a lot of subs and followers on twitter who really cares about that though the, the next thing i think hearthstone needs to do is program this guy to play a different sound if he's been played before in well this played. in a in a turn. There you go. Yeah, the other game that Gearbox released was called Burn Star. Earthfall. Like, even the website from Gearbox Publishing talking about Earthfall is, is just not. They don't have a video, they don't have any screenshots. Uh, let's see. Earthfall is a four player co op survival game where you and three other players use a wide variety of weapons and supplies and defenses. So, no surprise Earthfall isn't getting a lot of advertisement, but that's what Gearbox Publishing is supposed to do, is promote the games. And it, it really feels like Gearbox Publishing is just the place to go if you, if you want to very cheaply publish and you don't want any actual support. And I didn't think that's what they were supposed to, what they wanted to be. Moving on, TechRaptor has an article. Drink butt juice and solve puzzles in the Spiral Scouts now available on Steam. What? Uh, the Spiral Scouts is a foul mouthed puzzle game from Cantaloupe Kids and is now available for a purchase on Steam. 
The developer of Honey Pop got together with a friend and formed a new company by the name of Cantaloupe Kids, expressly for the purpose of re releasing the Spiral Scouts. The second commercial uh, developed by him and the first venture for his new company. So, the developer of Honey Pop is not with Hooney Dev anymore. Interesting. Uh, Spiral Scouts does look very much like it would be good YouTuber bait to something that would go over well with the YouTube and Twitch audience with raunchy humor. Uh, so I believe this game is already on uh, on my wish list, but I will add it. As for the game itself, it has a very bright and colorful cardboard cutout aesthetic. So it looks like everything is a 2D object that has been placed on cardboard and then added to a 3D isometric, uh, not isometric perspective, but a 3D tilted perspective. And yeah, it looks a lot like a Indiana Jones, not not Indiana Jones, Legend of Zelda-esque game. Maybe not so many dungeons, maybe not so much grinding. But it certainly caught my attention for very good looking graphics. It's 10% off for $8.99, so you, not even a big investment. It came out July 12th, and it's 93% positive under 32 user reviews, which is a little too small a number but right away. To, to base a judgment right on but it is a good indicator next game we have on steam is a game called dehumanized dehumanized i think i may have talked about this it's dehumanized as a roguelike side scroller active shooter inspired by metroid and the binding of isaac the world runs on physical rules with elements interacting uh, subtly with each other. To survive you have to take strength from beasts and learn the rules of the world and how it works. Interesting and the thumbnail certainly looks interesting. It's kind of a western comic book slash slightly right inspired by anime art styles. I'd say it's it's only ever so slightly if, if inspired at all. Whereas the actual gameplay footage has the the character that you're seeing in the thumbnail as this tiny chibi kind of robot character and she's fighting a giant spider and pigs and things and the art style is just completely different i don't know why you would do that pick one or the other don't don't promise me in the thumbnail one art style and give me something completely different during the gameplay like, i find that rather annoying uh, right away. But I right might away. be willing to overlook it because this game looks like it's actually got some polish to it and an actual effort and people seem to be liking it. Uh, it seems like the character has a Captain American shield. Uh, it's an early access game, 40% off for $1.19. Uh, however, this also, unfortunately, is from the exact same developer who is running the I believe and I've already reported uh, them for doing this uh, they're running the promotion that claims to give away a Nintendo right switch to right somebody away. who plays the game for more than two hours so it's convincing a lot of people to play the game and purchase it uh, and this is from the same developer that made uh, the Vagrant games. And let's see. Let's see. Mirror. Mirror is the other game that they made, which is a particularly provocative visual novel with a lady tied up in bondage. So, once again, it's a good looking game, and I'm gonna wishlist it, but in the same breath, I've already reported them to Steam for 
for doing running giveaways to people who play the game, which is not allowed. Like we we literally just cannot have this happen on Steam. If if this starts happening with any frequency, people will always run fake ads in which nobody wins to trick people into buying games and playing games they would have never bought or played. And the last thing Steam needs is another scam running on it. Uh, next game we have is called Seeking Dawn. It's a multiplayer survival VR adventure. It's mostly positive, 70% with 54 users. It looks like it's a game that takes place where you're in a mech suit and no, walking around no. a rather pretty looking uh, maybe it's not a mech suit as much as just a space suit with a HUD and you're walking around a pretty well animated alien world uh, it's kind of a shame that this is VR only and it's kind of a shame that it's mostly a multiplayer game it says it has single player but I don't believe it it, its languages are English and simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese, so take that with a grain of salt also. Uh, Chinese known for making some slightly lower quality products on occasion. Shells up. Right away. Right away. And Seeking Dawn is $39.99, which is Probably one of the most expensive VR games I've ever seen. I guess I'm just not going to break up. We're just going to go for two hours uh, plus in this last recording. I don't need extra episodes, frankly. I've got so many no, already no. ahead. Like I'm going to drop the ball and not have recordings for other games while still having months and months of, of Hearthstone episodes. There. Uh, next game we have on Steam is called Arc Noir, N O I R. It's a resource management heavy RPG which uses a variety of perks. That's certainly not what I would have thought it was. It looks like a visual novel, it's tagged as a v visual novel, but they're certainly selling it as something else. Uh, what it is is a dungeon crawler. And just not being marketed as that, apparently. Seems like they actually are on the a arc and going through a visual novel story consider. and every now and then fighting animals and fighting other people. This is a weird story to tell in a dungeon crawl game. Yeah. It's just too out there for me. I can't I can't recommend this game or wish list it. Uh, Arc Noir is 10% off for uh, $8.99. Uh, Gamma Sutra has the article, Nintendo showcases do-it-yourself games made with the Labo Toy-Con. Uh, for instance, apparently with the Labo, somebody made a Tea Time esque game uh, where they you make a cardboard teapot and pour it in the virtual tea teacups fill in. Another game was called Don't Break the Line, and well, that what seems is? to be it. Two people who won some kind of contest Nintendo was doing for making new games with the Labo. Nobody cares about the Labo. Uh, moving on, PC Gamer has an article, Anonymous 100,000k Donation Rockets Ninja's Guardian Con Charity Stream passed its goal. The convention's pre-show charity marathon also passed its $2.7 million goal. goal. So, Ninja's making money uh, for St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. So, I guess good for him. I, I get confused about ninjas sometimes. Like, 
some stories I hear about him, I, he's he's a bad guy, and some stories I hear about him, he's a good guy, or maybe he, every story I've heard about him, he's actually a good guy, uh, but there's just so many other Twitch streamers that the names get confused in my head. Like, so um, all I can really say is good for him on this one action. Like, YouTube streamers don't spend a lot of time generally watching other streamers uh, in the same genre, particularly. Like, as a video game critic and streamer, I'm not going to spend too much time watching other video game streamers. Uh, we've got a game called Synth Riders. It's a VR game. Let's see. It looks pretty good as far as a fast-paced, like, music game. I think it's probably a combination of Line Rider or, like, Beat Saber or something like that. We've seen several of them. Beat Saber is probably better to get, but Synth Riders is $9.99. And it doesn't look awful. Also, you have the benefit, I think, of if you're going to do a game right like uh, Let us if you're gonna do a game like Beat Saber or any music game you're less likely to, to get extremely exhausted before you've done one level uh, we've got another one of these competitive games called Whiskered Away on Steam it, graphics do not look good uh, some might argue that this is an artistic style. Uh, it's a bunch of cats that seem to be running around different places, different beaches, and you have to press, I think, just buttons to get out of the way of, of these waves that would drown you as Poseidon seems to be trying to kill you. It's a multiplayer only game. It requires a controller. It's free, so I guess the price is right, but that's kind of all I have to say about it. It's not anything that interesting. Hmm. Alright, let's. Pinch do this. Of death cup. Of shoes. Job done. Next game we have on Steam is called Beard and Axe. Top down action adventure roguelike. Unfortunately. It looks like MS Paint level graphics. It's not good looking. So that immediately turns me off as far as being interested what in it. If? It's 20% off for $7.99. And yeah, that's all I really have to say there. We already kind of talked about it, but Gamma Searcher has an article. Steam's upcoming games list gets a discoverability oriented revamp. Yeah, Let's the now see. popular upcoming uh, tab on Steam gets rid of a lot of the DLC and things that you're just not probably going to be interested in it. Uh, the In this article, they're saying roughly 180 games are released on Steam every week. Mm, seems about right. Uh, as somebody is looking at all of them, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm looking at, a, at about let's see 60 games every every time I stream uh, of course I'm still gonna look at all the games so unless Steam does something to to hold back the tide of new games and bad games on, on their storefront which they don't want to do they don't want to be the taste police I'm still gonna see them all and I don't look at that that field Next game we have on Steam is called Icons Combat Arena. It is mostly negative, with 38% of 306 users rating it positive. It's a f early access free-to-play indie fighting game. And what's weird about Icons or Combat Arena is it looks like a rather good Smash Brothers clone. So what's the problem? Does it play bad? It doesn't look like in the trailer it plays bad. This looks exactly like something you would 
kind of want. I bring life and hope. You are the shadow's puppet. So, yeah, I'm confused about this. It's it's free to play. No cost. What's the negative reviews say? Let's see. It says, remember PM I do. Let's see. Let's see. Here, the next not recommended review says, pros, it's free. If you can't run Dolphin Emulator, oh, this is almost shit. Smash Brothers for a PC. At least it tries to be. Cons. The game crashed the first time I launched it. I can't even finish a single online map before I close this to the main menu at random points. Creating custom lobbies just don't work on original con characters. Hmm. Let's see. So they just don't like the characters. The, they don't like the 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 bugginess of it. And I guess that's true. How original do the characters really have to be, frankly? That, that's a good question for a Smash Bros. clone. Like, maybe they have to be really original because, you know, Smash, Smash Bros. is all the Ni Nintendo characters, basically. Uh, the game that would, I guess, come closest to that would be Slap City, which is still in development because that has some indie game developers characters in it but that's still not going to be great uh, I seriously Perfect. doubt we would see Sega or Playstation Sony honor. or somebody the else try to make a victory. Smash Brothers like game they don't have enough characters to build up a roster um, you know the one people that could do it is if the creators of Street Fighter or blaze blue or one of those fighting games uh to these like stick fighting games if they decided to make something that was a lot more fast paced and a lot more like smash brothers that'd be interesting although i don't know why you'd separate the two games out you probably could also do something like dragon ball fighters uh, and have some of these the anime dragon ball z naruto games Play in that way again I'm not sure why that would be a separate game though and not just a mode in your main game moving on Eurogamer has an article the Tropico publisher Calypso has acquired the rights to the classic stealth tactic series commandos it is planning completely new games so commandos uh, as they currently are I don't think this is probably a game worth playing as like a top-down real-time strategy game um, if I was gonna play an old top-down real-time strategy I'd probably play Warcraft or um, Starcraft or something like that but interesting certainly to hear that new games are in development and that might hype some people that are fans of commandos uh, we've got an early access game on Steam called Islands of Nine N Y N E Battle Royale, and I, I'm pretty sure we've already this developer had released something called Islands of Nine before this. Islands of Nine Battle Royale is twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. This was this was an E three. This was one of the like 80 games that that Microsoft had on display uh, during their press conference and it was really just shown for half a second and Islands of Nine right now is mixed reviews at 69% of 955 user reviews uh, let's see the developers page apparently developers never made a game on Steam uh, publisher, yeah. This is the first game from from this developer as their own publisher, at least. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with Islands of Nine, but they they really just had to rush it out. Uh, I think it, probably more than any previous fad in the video game industry, they people have realized 
Oh no, these Battle Royale games are not going to succeed uh, for very long. People are going to get bored of them pretty fast. So I need to rush my game out and try to get some sales and just abandon it and finish the quarter. And hopefully not end up going bankrupt. Uh, that's basically what I think they're trying to do. Arguably, maybe there is a better time later to release a Battle Royale game four or five years down the line, but that's too late. But that's, uh, you can't, you can't do that. PUBG probably ate the lunch of a lot of people who were developing Battle Royale games before that point. Uh, and Fortnite is now eating PUBG's lunch, pretty much. Yeah, nothing more to say about Islands of Nine Battle Royale, though. I'm not really interested in it since it's a multiplayer game. Hmm. Let's do this. Out of my jungle. And hmm. hold on to this. And this. PC Gamer has an article. Ben Bro, the guy who used to work for Hearthstone and Activision Blizzard, uh, has a new studio called Second Dinner, and it's up and running. Uh, so that was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be, frankly. Uh, I thought he would have taken a little bit more of a break to not make it so extremely obvious that he just didn't want to work or very possibly was asked to leave Activision Blizzard. Uh, the tweet is announcing our new game studio second dinner and no details yes but we'll post them here when we got them. In the meantime go ahead and enjoy Reporting your first security. dinner. So there's this Twitter like Twitter account that I suppose I could follow and see what he's got to do. Although I was I, I recently muted Ben Bro because, frankly, if he wasn't saying anything about, uh, if he wasn't saying anything about Hearthstone, then he probably wasn't saying anything that was relevant to talk about. Medicine uh, why did I do that when I could have played that? That was a bad move. Moving on, Gamatsu has an article. Toho Sujininji 5 is coming to the Switch. That's S-O-U-J-I-N-E-N-G-I -I, and then the letter V, which I assume is a 5, is coming to the Switch July 26th. It's an RPG, you know, 8-bit character, anime characters. It's the game was first launched on the PS Vita in 2016, followed by PS4 in March 2018. So they're going through the whole list. Where one falls, two shall sprout. I hate when I have to play against this card. So I love when I play this card. Let's see, the PC version of Toho Sin Engine uh, launched in 2010. So maybe I'll look up and see if I can find the PC version of this game. And, and see what the reviews are. No, it doesn't seem like there's a five. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, doesn't seem like I can find the PC version of this. All right, let's. Your magic shall not save you. this guy at least. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. 
do some more research there. Gamma Sutra has an article of Vampire, that's V-A-M-P-Y-R, sells 450,000 copies in the first month. I'm not sure if that's uh, great news. Uh, uh, earlier this year they said it needed to sell a million copies to be successful. I'm not sure they're going to hit that at this rate. Pinch of death cup. Come on. You are the shadow's puppet. Hmm. Die, so if I mage. do this, this, and this. There we go. Yeah, I'm not really sure Vampire is going to make a million sales. So we already talked about Bard's Tale. That was a duplicate tab. Why was that still open? Uh, PC Gamers has an interesting article from a day ago. Getting my friends into World, War World of Warcraft is a nightmare. The 14-year-old MMO is doing itself no favors with trying to attract new players. And see, I think that is totally the case as somebody who is, uh, has never played World of Warcraft. Is, I couldn't imagine getting into it, having any kind of experience like the people who, uh, who originally played it. And, like, you, you're going to have one of two options, either use the abilities they give you to rush the experience and get to a very high level way too early or you're gonna have to grind through an extremely large amount of content that uh, kill this guy just for the fun of it revenge do my thing See, if he manages to kill everything, that'll be amazing. Like, I really kind of wish that there was a... ...story-based, single-player experience, single-mode, catch-up mode that would let you play Warcraft up to a point where you feel like, okay, now I'm ready to join my friends, I'm not going to be a burden on my friends. Uh, and I, I've had the experience I want to have, and now I'm ready for the continued experience. Which I'm not sure too many people really want a games as service continued experience like World of Warcraft and, and other MMOs the way that was offered in, in the old days. I'm still not sure people want games as services, continued uh, experiences, continuing forever experiences in modern games like Destiny either. So, like, there's a lot, a lot of questions there if anybody can actually get into Warcraft these days. Uh, we have a game on Steam called Slash or Die 2. It looks like it's kind of a low effort, top-down, dual-stick RPGs, hack and slasher, magic game. Uh, whatever it is, it's certainly not appealing to me visually. It's 20% off for $3.19, and since I don't see anything here that interests me, I'll just close that tab. I've still got so many tabs. So, so many tabs. Get rid of these two. Keep that one. Uh, Rock Paper Shotgun has an article. The Dark Siders 3 devs have announced a co-op shooter called Remnant. It's kind of crazy. I mean, how can that be the case that Gunfire Games was done with Dark Size 3 and was there somebody else working on it, polishing it, QAing it? Uh, is Dark Size 3 going to end up being extremely buggy because of that? Uh, if that was the case, I, I don't know if that really is the case. I'm, I'm baselessly speculating. But how do you just have another game? in development uh, and I don't even think it's 
uh, just in development. I, it, it has things to show. So, I don't know, did they break off some enemy character? Like, I'm looking at the trailer for them, and the first thing it says, Perfect World, and then it says Gunfire Games, so maybe Perfect World Entertainment was the one working on it. Uh, if I looked up Perfect World, I think they, they recently broke away from a bigger company or had something cancelled on them. Uh, Remnant looks a lot like Left 4 Dead 4 players and shooting and fighting against hordes of monsters. Um, it's... yeah. Left 4 Dead except for its monsters instead of zombies and you're going through different areas and that, that looks like that would be a decent experience. Why did I do that? That was dumb. Yeah, why did I do that? Yeah. Hmm. Winner uh, This article hey, says, So far, Remnant reminds me a bit of Warframe, which is not a good comparison considering. Uh, Considering Warframe, I don't think is succeeding well at all. Uh, I think Warframe might be the game that two days out of after release has only like two players on it for an MMO multiplayer game. Uh, it says Remnant is due out sometime in 2019 and will be published by the Chinese MMO outfit Perfect World Entertainment. Ah, that's where I recognize Perfect World Entertainment from. Is it's it's a Chinese company, probably in some small part owned by Tencent, since everything seems to be. Yeah. I don't think Remnant is going to be an amazingly great game, but maybe it will. We, we're going to have to wait and see. Next game we have on Steam is called Insane Robots. It says it's a. It's like a top down uh, hexagon based RPG game it says it's a casual game how can it be an RPG and a casual those two things usually com conflict pretty badly it says single player multiplayer online multiplayer 76 achievements that's way too many 10% off for $17.99. I'm trying to bend over backwards on this one to, to give it a chance. But everything I see of this doesn't doesn't look amazingly good. This is a game that for the first time since I started looking at games, I'm gonna just say if this game is good, somebody's gonna have to tell me about it. I'm gonna have to see either somebody like Giant Bomb or Whoever, somebody relatively, somebody that, whose voice I would hear, I guess. I, I, it doesn't matter if they're credible or not. Uh, but I, I'd have to have somebody tell me, check this game out again, because just looking at it straight up, it's not quite there. And we already talked about the Bard's Tale. Seems like a lot of people are well talking played. about the Bard's Tale. Uh, TechRaptor has an article, Anima, that's A-N-I-M-A, colon, Gates of Memories. The name is Chronicles Review. Uh, so, this game looked kind of interesting, but apparently they didn't like it too much because they gave it a 5 out of 10, which is... Uh, hmm. it, which is a very low score for video games, where most games, even if you're average, gets a 7.5. Uh, the last art paragraph here says, I really wanted to like Anime Gates of Memories, the name is Chronicles. I honestly hope that the sequel could improve upon the original game in all the right ways, and sending instead many elements either feel like they're 
stagnant or to or took a blatant step backward they reused levels and story elements that didn't help this at all the whole game gives the vibe that it was supposed to be dlc they made our full product there's you still some fun it. to be found the here but it's just victory. smashed somewhere between one of the two one of the many repetitive boss fights i'm still not a hundred percent sure that i agree with the reviews of tech raptor since i'm trying to trying to see if tech raptor is a new source for me i kind of like them they seem to be telling at least slightly different stories and talking about slightly different games uh but i'm not sure i have given credibility to to their reviews which is a sad statement because i've definitely way too easily and way too early gave credibility to people people like rock paper shotgun your gamer pc gamer giant bomb uh, I could go on Kotaku for a long time. I I was I was definitely listening to what Kotaku was saying. Uh, uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam called Warhammer Forty Thousand: Gladius Relics of War. It's a mostly positive game. Seventy nine percent of two hundred thirty four reviews. It's a Warhammer Forty K turn based strategy. And yes, if I was going to play a top-down real-time strategy, why not play Warhammer 40k? Wouldn't that be the right one to play? See, this came out July 12th. I must this would be the one I need to wishlist. I need to go into my list and say, if I'm going to play anything, why not play this one? And then probably consider n removing any other oh, Warhammer games that might be on my wish list and say, look, I'm only going to play the newest one. I don't have time in my life to play them all. Uh, moving on, we have a game called Rifter. It says it's a fast-paced, futuristic platformer. This actually does look like it's pretty fast-paced, uh, but it's one of these games that it's extremely extremely low polygon <laughs> like just polygonal sh shapes it seems like all or what you're playing as Most running in platforming with some m small bits of boss fights which i guess that is something different you are the shadows puppet hmm it's 100% positive of 18 user reviews. That doesn't mean anything right now. Rifter is 20% off for $9.59. Frankly, Rifter is just too fast of a game. Like, looking at the example playthroughs on the videos, if that's how fast you have to play, I don't think I'd enjoy that. It, it gets to the level of like a Sonic game Medicine where Sonic simple. games kind of are never great because they moved too fast and caused you to crash into things that you didn't even see. Let's see, we already talked about Epic increasing the revenue split on Unreal. So we talk about that. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, the story-driven dungeon crawler Fall of Light. Darkest Edition has been announced for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Is there any any trailer here? This looks like a Dark Souls-esque hmm. art style. A warrior and his daughter, and his daughter apparently is full of light and glowing, where the warrior is in this armor. Let's see what I want to do. This hmm. Hmm. This, this kind of looks like it might be a game sort of in the same vein of well, I was gonna say like eco, but it it actually isn't. It's it's a top-down hack and slasher where you just happen to be dragging your daughter along and probably have to protect her. And that was the part of it that seemed like Hiko. Let's see, Fall of Light launched on the on Steam September 2017, so 
it, yeah, Fall of Light right now is mixed reviews mm. at 67% of 110 user reviews in the last three days, or 64% in its lifetime since September 28th, 2017. So, I guess I'll wishlist this and keep an eye on it, but that's not a glowing review, no pun intended. Mm. You are the shadows perfect. Let's see. Game has an article uh, Monster Hunter World X Final Fantasy 14 collaboration has been uh, will launch August 1st and they have a trailer. So it's kinda weird to have a collaboration between two games that are so close to each other. Like I don't really feel like too much is going to be different there, but Final Fantasy in particular has been more than happy to have uh, collaborations with some rather strange picks. Let's play this. Gamatsu has an article, 7 minutes of the Legend of Hero Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4, event scene footage. So it's just a trailer of event scenes. And yeah, when you skip around in the video, you can see it. It looks like it's animated pretty well. Uh, for a PlayStation 4 game, I believe, yeah, it's coming out. PlayStation 4, September 27th in Japan. I assume it will come out to the rest of the world eventually too. Be reborn in the curse. We have a game on Steam called Earthfall, which is 64% positive for 115 user reviews in the last 30 days, but over its lifetime it's mostly positive at 74% for 478 uh, reviews. It's an action war violent online co-op game. It looks a little bit better than Remnant. Uh, so why are people not happy with it right now? It's $29.99, that's pretty expensive. And let's see. Like, the first not recommended review says, I'd only recommend this game to people who've already put hundreds of hours in Left 4 Dead, Vermintide, and Killing Floor. It could go get better, but I don't feel confident recommending this stage to anyone else. Let's see. And in the turn, let's see. There's no way to kick griefers or AFK players. Melee weapons are guaranteed way to hurt your teammates. Many guns feel like toys. Sound design is inconsistent. UA, UI has a lot of problems. Levels are poorly designed with either a lot of dead ends or loops. Characters are uninteresting. Lore is lazily set up as an unlockable instead of as part of the level narrative. Interesting. Well, since Earthfall is a multiplayer game, and if I was going to play anything like Left 4 Dead, I probably should play Left 4 Dead since I already own it. I'm going to again say that a game like Earthfall is going to have to come to my attention through some other means a second time. Let's do that. There we go. In the turn. So many games. So, so many games. Until I, this, like, this, way more games this Friday. Did I end early? on Wednesday and I'm just forgetting it? 
maybe maybe that was the problem i don't know uh let's see is this game even in english uh yes it is so we've got a game called kohime inbu Ryora. Uh, which that is K O I H I M E space E N B U space R Y O R A I R A I. It's a action anime 2D fighter. It looks pretty good. Like uh, the feel on a fighting game certainly is going to be a major factor. Like if it doesn't feel good. It, it doesn't feel good. Uh, it's just that simple. If it doesn't play well, or if there's not a lot of people playing it, that is also a major problem. Uh, this game is does seem to have 10 stages at least, and a challenge mode where you can learn moves. Uh, this is actually a really nice setup trailer showing off a lot more than what you see in most of the fighting games. Like, most fighting games just show you a little bit of fighting. Like, that one did actual advertising editing to show you different characters, different gameplay modes. Uh, it seems like all of the characters are anime girls, so take that or leave them. Uh, they're in. Mostly, it looks like traditional Japanese uh, ancient clothing type things or something, some stereotypes, something like that. Uh, so, you're, I'm not seeing anybody really in a schoolgirl's outfit so much. Uh, let's see, it's $19.99, 47 Steam achievements. Seems like a lot, mm. but maybe not. Maybe 50 Steam Achievements is the right number. And what else can we say about it? Seems like it might be the con continuation of another game from this developer that is rated very positive. 80%, that's an extremely high rating. So yeah, I will wishlist these two anime fighting games. And if I ever get to the point where I'm actually playing anime fighting games, they will be in consideration. This. 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 Job done. I have so many games to wish list that I, even. The, even at the end here, I, I, I still have a full title bar. Uh, next game we have on Steam is called Dead or School. It's an early access. It's rated 86% positive with 22 user reviews. Came out July 11th. It's an early access RPG action indie anime game. Uh, this is probably heavily inspired by High School of the Dead. You know, a zombie game with anime school people fighting them. Uh, except for, in this case, it seems like you're side scrolling and punching and hacking and slashing uh, monsters and zombies. Interesting. So. We, we've seen some other games like this, like Oni Chamba, where you're sword slashing to kill zombies. And, and this is just like a slightly different, different experience. And see the story as I'm watching the trailer here is that this girl is raised her entire life and lived in subways because the zombies have taken over the entire overworld and she's she's trying to retake the the entire world using the subway system to 
go to different areas. Interesting. So, if you ever wanted to learn the Tokyo subway system, it seems like you might learn some of it. Early access, 10% for $13.49. I can't, can't eliminate uh, dead or school. Uh, it's not tagged with nudity, so I, I bet you're you're only gonna get a few cheesecake lewd shots here and there. I bet this is not one of those games. And interestingly, this is the first game from this developer, and it looks a lot more polished than I would have expected. <laughs> Like, even with such a great deck that I'm playing right now, it's, it's still pretty much impossible to defeat somebody once they've got this... this setup. Let's see, and we already talked about that, so... We don't need to talk about that again. We have a game on Steam called Diary, Def Diary of Defender. Uh, seems like an odd language. It's early access action adventure indie core. It says it looks really pretty, like way more than what I would call an asset flip. It, I'm not 100% sure that this isn't a militaristic game, though. Hmm. Let's see. The only description here is in this game, you become a defender, return to the age of war, defenses of the enemy, waves of attack. It, it doesn't seem like it's written by somebody who speaks English. It's in English and ch simplified Chinese. It requires VR. It's $14.99. It looks really, really pretty, but I, I kind of wonder if it's an mind. example of just straight up stolen, uh, stolen content. Somebody contracted the wrong Chinese company and they decided to reuse the, the work for their own game. Yeah, I, I don't see anything in Diary of Defender that would make many people want to play it unless you have VR. And if you have VR, then it kind of makes sense. Because it is really pretty. That's about all you can get. I can see to your power. Let's see. Yamatsu has Super Neptunia RPG opening movie as an article. I wanted to watch that. Man. We'll go one more game. Two and a half hours uh, for this last recording. Should have broken it up. Didn't. Every time I think to break it up and don't, I regret it. Okay, Super Neptunia looks like it's a interesting JRPG and it's intro tra trailer. We'll have to see the you real gameplay, it. however, the because that's always the issue. Is like the gameplay itself might look completely different than the trailers. Super Neptunia RPG is coming out for the PlayStation 4 on September 27th in Japan and the PS4 and Switch in North America and Europe this fall. We have turned our curse into our strength. Uh, Gamatsu also has Black Cover, Black Clover Fantasy Knights debut trailer. And let's see, Black Cover, Clover Fantasy Knights is due out for the iOS and Android uh, store in Japan on 2018. Is someone injured? So, this is an interesting first instance in which I've seen somebody make a mobile phone game and actually show it on a mobile phone screen even if it's an animated cell phone screen. Uh, I wanted to kind of know what Black Clover was because it's an anime I've heard about. I think it's a fighting anime. Um, seems like the game it's, is a RPG team based game. It's probably not going to be that amazing. 
since it's a cell phone game. And mm. It probably won't ever come to the West either. Let's see, play this, right do away. this, play this, and do this. Job done. Must move quickly. And the turn. And then we have a game on Steam called Bug Splat, which has a interesting, like, comic style from the 70s. It, it, like, completely not influenced by anime at all. Like, a comic book style that you just don't see very often. Uh, it's kind of unique. I, I could argue maybe it's bad, or maybe it's intentionally designed to look a little bad. Both might be the case. Uh, the game itself is just insects of all kinds of variety that you slap, so it's not an ingenious game, and it's asking for a ridiculous amount of money for $5.99. But I kind of want to give this one Your magic the benefit of the doubt me. and see if maybe the price goes down. I, I try it. Uh, it's the first game from this developer. It came out July. Uh, June 9th uh, So yeah Bug Splat that's B-U-G space S-P-L-A-T-T two T's And we've only got a couple more arguments uh, a couple more articles Gamma Sutra has an article, Magic Leap grabs an investment from AT&T as it sets up a US distribution deal. Uh, apparently, Magic Leap is closer to release than anyone thought. We'll see if it really happens. Uh, Gamma Sutra has another article, RuneScape generates $800 million in lifetime revenue during its 17 years online, which one assumes that that's a good amount of money. That probably is. And Gamma Sutra's final article for the day, I believe, that we're going to talk about is Nintendo has reportedly rolled out a hardware patch following the Switch exploit. So, uh, new versions of the Switch are probably not going to allow you to uh, uh, play the game, uh, bootload it, hack it, whatever you're doing with it, whether you're playing stolen games or doing right something away. different. Thank you. They, they're saying they think it's using the eye patch system on the N NVIDIA's Tegra chip to put in protective code into the boot ROM, which cuts, us, cuts off the USB recovery er error that hacks, hackers previously accessed. Hmm. Older firmware older than 4.1 is still susceptible, so... Uh, so there's a chance, if you don't get the update, that you could still hack it. And I imagine there'll be another hack out of the way. And I'm on the Humble Store, which tells me that I am at the end. There's still no game bundles. And it's been at least a month now. Uh, no com game bundles whatsoever. The only th way to get bundles is to do the Humble Bundle monthly thing, uh, which I don't think I want to do. So then that moves us to the Prime Day stuff. Just play this. That's some insane. And play this. And I'm checking every day on Twitch. Prime Day games. Apparently, there's some Warframe in game loot. Playing that. The game Bridge. The game Tacoma. 
They're giving away actually really good games. Like, I cannot say anything other than that. There have been some amazingly good games that are relatively new. Like, not you're not talking four or five year old games that you're getting for free with Twitch Prime. You're, you're talking games that came out in a lot less time than that. Let's see. That would be 77. That would work. That won't work. I wonder. Let's play this. And then... Let's play that. And then the turn. And so I'm back to Twitter and there's no way I'm scrolling down Twitter uh, at the end of this game. We're wrapping up. So while I'll scroll down while we're still playing, there's more games coming out. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why so many games came out between Wednesday and Friday. Maybe this is the catch up for so many games that didn't want to come out during the Steam Summer Sale, or, uh, hmm. or may, maybe this is like E3 avoidance instead of the Steam Summer Sale, that might be more realistic. PC Gamer has an article, all this time, Aliens, Colonial, Marine, Stupid AI, AI may have been caused by a typo. Possible. Programming does happen. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Just waiting one turn to steal this from him. Uh, taunt. Gotta play this. Yeah, play a taunt. Play this. Mm down Randy Pitchford promoting uh, his wife's restaurant slash bar in Urbania hmm. Wait, I don't think he I don't think he really properly discloses a lot of that job's done there we go, what are you gonna do now? Hmm. I I did want to mention in watching the trailers for Let's Go Pokemon, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, uh, the way they animate your rival and Brock and Misty certainly looks different from the way they are in the cartoons, at least last time I saw a Pokemon cartoon. Uh, certainly also the current cartoons are not really, I think, involving Brock or Misty. Both of those have been characters that have just kind of aged out of the story narrative. Uh, but it looks pretty good. Their heads are way too big though. Uh, their necks are too small, their heads are too big. Uh, Misty's in a different outfit than what you would think was traditional. I think Rock might be in a different outfit too than what you'd expect. 
I, I think somebody once calculated how old, like, uh, there's like a YouTube video of how old uh, Ash Ketchum would be at this point, and uh, storyline-wise, he's 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 actually extremely younger younger than the number of years that the show has been on. Uh, we got it, and I'm pretty sure we got all the daily quests on everything, but I'm not even willing to go look because if I find out that there's more to do, I'm just going to do it off screen. This has been a long stream, a good stream. We got people on Friday actually communicating, actually talking on the chat. That's something that certainly hasn't been happening very much. We got notifications. I assume that those two things are connected. YouTube, by the way, did say that tags you put in videos don't really matter that much. So I guess I'll just continue to do tags. Maybe the comments aren't being displayed particularly well. Uh, maybe I changed the colors the wrong direction uh, and made them all black when I was trying to make them all white. It seems like that might be the case, so apologies for that. Uh, nobody sent a new friend request on Battle.net. Uh, I thought somebody might. Oh well. That's it for this stream. Great stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me, I'm asking people to friend me on Steam and gift me a game or a gift card or direct message me a Steam code on Twitter. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.